Someone asked, where is the date of the apocalypse in the Bible? The question shows one of these two things. Either complete ignorance of what the book of Revelation speaks about or belittling, which is usual nowadays. In other words, it won't happen. But I will choose the first option and I will answer the question as it was made. Where is the date of the apocalypse in the Bible? Many people would like to know. By the way, this is an ancient question. The disciples asked the Lord Jesus, when will these things happen, take place? So it is a question that both Christians and atheists want to know. Will the world last eternally? And if not, when will it end? But sometimes I realize that the content of the question is more focused on how much time left do I have to enjoy life before the world ends than really on knowing the seriousness of this event and what will happen later after this event to your soul. So let's go. Where is the date of the Apocalypse in the Bible? If you read in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, when Jesus spoke about the signs of the times, he said, Assuredly, from verse 30, Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. He was talking about the generation that would see the signs happening. And why do you see many Christians saying that Jesus is coming back, that the apocalypse is near, the rapture is near, the end times is near? Why? It is because there has never been a generation in the entire history of humanity in which so many signs of the end times were happening simultaneously. I won't speak much about this topic, but as I said on the previous message, you can read the book The World Will Burn, which will give you an overview about that, connected to current times. But this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place of which Jesus speaks, is the generation would leave the signs. And that is why the generation we live in is the one that fits this the most, the words of Jesus, which was something that in the 60s, 70s, 40s, in the 1800s, in the 15th century, would not fit in the prophecies made by the Lord Jesus almost 2,000 years ago fit our generation. Then he goes on. This generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away. In other words, heaven and the earth, as we know, will pass away. And you see how the natural forces are convulsing, per se, both as a reaction to the actions of men. It seems that nature is revolted against men. The Bible says that creation groans and it waits, it calls for the day of judgment. It seems that the earth is crying out, is convulsing against men. And that is why we have seen so many natural catastrophes, not previously experienced or seen, and with such intensity. And he says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass. In other words, to those who doubt the words of the Lord Jesus, learn this. If you have your feet 
on the floor. Or if you are driving your vehicle and your vehicle is driving with its four wheels over a ground or you have a house structured on the ground and you feel safe because you are on a ground because there's nothing more secure supposedly as the ground that's why there's the saying keep your feet on the ground but learn this more secure than your feet on the ground more secure than the ground beneath our feet is the word of God because one day this ground will no longer exist more secure than the heaven that you look up to and every morning you see the sun rising and every afternoon the sun setting and the moon coming and we know this precisely we know the time the hour that the sun will set and rise we know it but more certain than the heaven that is above your head is that the word of God will not pass away is more secure more last longing than the ground beneath your feet and the heaven over your head. This is what Jesus is saying. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Then he speaks about the day and hour of his coming, of the apocalypse, the date of the apocalypse. Jesus speaks about that in verse 32. But of that day and hour, no one knows not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, referring to himself, but only the Father. There is only one person who knows the day and hour, the Father, no one else, neither angel, nor archangel, nor demons, nor even the Son himself, the Lord Jesus, Neither pastor, bishop, no church, no denomination, no prophet. If someone comes to you and say, he will come back this day and hour. The world will end at this day and hour. As many, they said, along history. And they became clowns of history. And all those who believed in them too. So run away from them because they are false prophets. If someone tells you, the time and hour will be this. Because no one knows. And no one knows for a reason. Jesus said, Take heed, watch and pray. Take heed, in other words, be attentive, watch, watch what is happening and pray. Have communion with God, for you do not know when the time is. The reason for that is clear. And this even has a resemblance to the carnival period, as we spoke before. Because to determine the date of carnival every year, first they look at the date of Easter, of the Holy Week. They count 40 days prior to it and they determine one day before, 41 days before, and they determine the carnival date. Why? Because the thought behind carnival is the following. Since we are going to enter a period of sanctification, of abstinence, then let's enjoy it while there's time, until the last day before entering the spirit of abstinence. So the resemblance to this question that many ask with the intention of enjoying as much as they can is this. People often want to know the day and hour because they think, if I know the day and hour, I will get ready. Am I right? I'll get ready. But I ask you, is that what God wants? That with all hypocrisy, the person may live totally oblivious to him, knowing when the world will end, when they will die, and then they repent, per se? So you understand why God didn't reveal the day and hour to anyone. No one knows. By the way, what he says is that it will be a total surprise. Total surprise. Nobody will be expecting 
those who are attentive to the signs will be ready in the sense of it will be closer than ever, but no one knows the time and hour. Did you understand? That's why there's a need of what? Vigilance. What does God want to do with this way of acting about the apocalypse? He wants people to live every day as if it was the last. And not in the sense of if tomorrow I'm dying, I will enjoy it. As if it was the last in the sense of taking care of your soul. The last day on earth, because the last day on earth is not the last day of your soul. Your last day on this earth, of your body breathing on this earth, is not the last day of your soul. It is a passage from life to eternity. So, to live every day as if it was your last involves what? If he returns today, tomorrow, how is my life? How is my soul? How is my spirit? How is my communion with God? For you to evaluate your condition, not of a matter of being kind, of good works, because will not be the good ones who will be saved. Because being good before God's eyes has nothing to do with what people do in sense of obligation, on being righteous. But good before God's eyes is believing in the Lord Jesus, believing in His Son, accepted the sacrifice He made on the cross in our place for their souls. Because it doesn't matter how good you are because you're still a sinner. And our good works cannot cleanse our bad ones. This is the need of faith. Faith is what justifies us. Faith is what saves, not good works. Those who are saved have good works. But not everyone who has good works is saved. So don't worry about the date of the apocalypse. Worry about living every day as if the apocalypse will happen today in reverence, fear, and obedience to the word of God. And then, if it happens today, tomorrow, whenever it comes, you will be safe. You will be at peace. This is God's wisdom and is what the Holy Spirit warns those who have understanding once again, the words of the Lord Jesus, not of men. Take heed, watch, and pray, for you do not know when the time is. If today's video helped you and you know someone that could benefit from it, share it with them, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may do so now. See you later.